There is something you may have seen around before called if name equals main or double equals main. And you may have wondered what the hell that even means. Well, this video is going to show you because it is an incredibly useful thing to know and really, you know, should be in every Python script that you write. For those of you that have done other languages before, especially, well, at the very least C language, I'm not sure how well this translates to every other language out there, but it works sort of like the int main in C++ or just any main um, function in uh, or in uh, like other C languages, I think most other languages. It serves as an entry point and its main goal in Python, because you can sort of have an entry point in it everywhere, is to make sure that it only runs precisely when you want it to. Um, and, you know, I'm going to show you sort of what I mean by that. So we're going to have our file called test.py and then we're going to have another file called program.py. Program.py isn't going to have much in it, but test.py is going to have a decent amount. So this is going to just have import test. That's literally all it's going to have. It's not going to have anything else at all um, unless I decide to put something more in test. I haven't really decided how I'm going to do this yet. Um, so let's say we have a function called hello and then we have the name and then we return, uh, you know, hello name for, you know, just a really, a really basic example. And then we have a uh, string equals hello name. It's, I probably could have done a slightly easier example on this, but whatever. Ethan, and then, you know, just print string, for example. And then we do a pi and then a test.py. And we can see that it prints hello Ethan. And now if we print pi program.py, it also prints hello Ethan. Now this shouldn't normally happen. There are instances where you would want variables in imported files to be loaded. So for example, if you had a logger or you had constants that are important in the file, you would want it to be defined there. So say this function, for example, you would want this to be defined. See, I knew there was a reason it is a function. Uh, you would want this to be defined for later use in the file. So say if you had a class that called this, then it's it's there and available even when it's imported. Uh, mainly, you know, helpful in packages. For example, we need stuff around the place. But this sort of thing you wouldn't normally want. This is, you know, it looks quite debuggy. Really, we wouldn't necessarily want that to be run uh, or shown when we import test into program. Um, because we might want, you know, test dot hello uh, Nathan for example that's the that's the next name I can think of and now if we do that uh, we need to print it because it doesn't uh, it returns it doesn't it yeah, hello Ethan hello Nathan so what if we only wanted Nathan in there we can use this if name uh, double equals main to do it so if name equals main it will now run this code. So if I do pi uh, test.py, you do hello Ethan, as you can see above, uh, pi program.py now just outputs hello Nathan. You may be wondering what in the ever living is going on here. <laughs> so I'm gonna quickly explain all the parts of this so you know exactly what's happening. So name is a dunder string. So dunder means double underscore. You may hear sunder as well, which is single underscore. Uh, but double underscores, attributes, variables, functions, methods, all you know, all these things often defined as magic methods or you know magic whatever. And they are uh, predefined by the library or predefined by the language, sorry, things that just exist at runtime. You don't need to define them. These are just things that Python does well, for you, it just goes, hey, this is what this is now. And this double underscore name is the name of the module per se. So if we were to print a uh, name here, see a name is main. Now this is because this is the file that we are running. However, if I were to print it, if, if I were to import it from program and I were to print it here, for example, it would be test because test is the name of the file, or at least that's what it's been imported as. I do wonder, if we were to do that, would it print T? Uh, it would not. Okay, that's fine. I didn't know, felt like testing it. Uh, so test is the name of the module that we're importing, therefore name is test. However, when we import it, 
uh, when we don't import it, when we just run it, it's called main. And this is a, you know, it's it's intentionally bizarre to try and reduce the chance of a conflict. So you could name a file main like this, and you can get past this, sure. But what this does is it basically just provides an interface you know, that isn't easily overridable, that you shouldn't really ever need to overwrite. And if you do overwrite, it'll probably cause problems anyway. To provide a check so that, you know, if you are intentionally running this file, that's essentially what this line is saying, then do all these things. And this is good for testing. It's good for, well, it's good for scripts in general, really. But uh, yeah, so that's what that does. It's a very simple, very short explanation. There's not really an awful lot to it, but it is incredibly useful to know. And you should be using it in every script that you write. If you write Python packages and you need to do you know, certain debugging things, you can do this and then just have this in here. And then when you test them somewhere else, it doesn't matter. And then you can either remove this or you cannot remove this, depending on what you want to do. Um, but yeah, really useful, really easy, and just overall a no-brainer. Uh, so that is, well, really all I need to say for that. If you like the video, let me know. It does help out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. I don't buy it, I promise. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and, you know, I'll post more like it and maybe you'll like those too, who knows. I'd also like to thank my amazing patrons on screen now. One pound a month and you can be on that screen too. I recently enabled memberships on the channel, so for one pound a month on YouTube, you can be on this screen as well. There are other tiers and stuff. You can look at it using the join button down below. And I will see you next time for probably the next episode of Perfect Python. Uh, I said that in the last video, and this video will definitely be the next episode of Perth and Python next. Um, so I will see you for that.